After 23 years, I can honestly say I couldn't imagine life not being married to her, even though there's days she frustrates me. And, and I, way more days that you frustrate me. She's easily frustrated. <laughs> you guys to pray for us. We're in a severe cold snap up here. <laughs> or down here. Down here in Florida. So I know. Hey it is. Tonight it's 50 degrees. 50 degrees. I mean <laughs> people. <laughs> we're like freezing. <laughs> so, no I we're actually like it's cold down here and we're like it could be up in Wisconsin. Yeah and it's eight degrees up there and like where my son lives it they're getting three to five inches of snow tonight. <laughs> Anyway. So we shouldn't be complaining. Yeah, feel sorry if you want, but... I thought you were actually going to say you should be praying for us because we've had such a bad day. <laughs> She's had a bad day. We've I, been I, arguing half the day today. Married couples, you know how that is. And then I'm like, and we got to go film our, film our show, so I let's go. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with her today. I've been fine. As most of you men know, it's generally the women's fault. <laughs> well, we get aggravated. You guys aggravate us. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> okay, so anyway, we ended up, um, last week we ended up, you know, we had talked about our son Chris, and, um, and then, you know, we had a lot of aftermath related to that, and you know, still years where, you know, you can never fill the void of someone missing. However, in the midst of all this, um, about three months after well, Chris, Kaylin was born, yes. our first granddaughter. Correct. And that helped. I mean, she gave us something, to, another person to live for, another person to care for. And... Um, so yeah, that was three months later, and and then a couple years later, David. David, yeah. Via um, from my drinking and drug use days, I had had another child during that time, and uh, J. Rod and I weren't married yet. I had had another child during that time, and I was 21 years old and trying to get sober. I already had had Andy at the time and Christopher. Um, they were three and five. And I know it's kind of odd that you would give up a child for adoption after you already have children. You don't hear that probably too often. But I was already a single mother and I was in the process of trying to get sober. And, um, which I was trying to get sober after I found out I was pregnant with David. So, um, I decided to put him up for adoption. So, because I thought he would have a better chance in the world than he would have with me at the time. Because the, the boys being little, uh, I had neglected him for several years. So, um, you know because of my drugs and my drinking and the way we were living, I had really neglected them. Not neglect like <clears throat> abuse or that, but just because the, her priorities were Correct. herself. Selfish neglect, not like the kids weren't fed or right. beaten or yeah. that. Just not the attention that you should give a three and a five year old. So no. I want to clarify that. Yeah, they didn't get that attention and so they had a lot of emotional issues, both of them at the time, and I had a lot of issues <laughs> from my alcohol and drug use, and so I was trying to get the three of us help, and I just thought um, putting, bringing another child in the mix would not be good for the, for the child and not be good for us trying to get well. So I was trained actually to give all of us a chance. And, um, but 19 years later, 
um, and I'm trying to think of what year it was, that David's mother found me through Christopher's Candle website. She remembered Chris's name, found the website of Christopher's Candle, and therefore found me, and then got a hold of me through Facebook, and we set up a meeting of our families um, to meet each other. So um, their family, which consisted of David and two other adopted siblings, and the parents came out to meet us. And in hindsight, I, I know there's a, a, a ton of mixed emotions, but you said you gave him up in the hopes that he would have a, a better opportunity right. in life. Yeah. And in hindsight, you would say, he was adopted by two loving, caring parents. Apt he was. Thank, and God. Thank God. They, yes. They raised a good young man. Yes. And I mean, all the years, I prayed for him all the time. And, um, you know, just prayed that he was in a loving home and that he was doing well. And, you know, and he was. He was raised by two very loving parents. And they're wonderful people. Yeah. Prior to... Excuse prior me. to... Chris's passing, there would be a period of time that she would kind of be very depressed and she may stay in the room all day and I, it took me a couple years to figure it out that it was always the anniversary of this baby. No, oh, his birthday. David. Yeah. When she gave him up for her adoption. It was something she didn't discuss with me or talk to me openly. I mean, she did once I, you know, was smart enough to figure out. I wonder what, why is she doing this? This isn't typical of her. And it was, well, once a year, same time every year. And, you know, I don't like to, I guess it was the second year I was like, ah, must be David's birthday. I didn't know David, never seen him. Well, we didn't know his name at that time. We just do now. No, but I yeah. didn't know, I mean... David was adopted out long before I ever came into the picture. Yeah. 92. No, it was 94. 94. Yeah. Absolutely nuts. I mean, Horribly. Then, so three years after. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I met her three years after. She, they, and she was very open about that. And from my perspective, when David, I had a lot of mixed emotions because I was like, all right, I already accepted these two children that weren't mine right as my own yeah raised them as my own and now a, a kid I never met never knew I mean I knew of him but I just never expected that and that was a real looper for me I I didn't know where I fit in that picture I was like you know never raised them never did anything you know I, I didn't birth them I didn't you, you know what I mean so that, that was a whole odd situation for me, and that worked out. Yeah. Just, you know. Yeah. Because we do have a relationship with him, his parents, and, I mean, we go to birthday parties and things like that. They're wonderful, and they're accepting of us. They invited us in as an extended part of their family. Yeah, I mean, they're really one, uh, really spectacular people something i may i may have struggled with in their situation um but david calls her mom and her mom mom and i might have had a, a struggle with her it, you know i raised him since he was you know peeing and pooping his pants to 19 but she's never even gave an inkling of any jealousy that David identifies of having two moms. Well, her and I talked about it at first. Yeah. And both of us had emotions in regarding yeah. various things. and But we talked through it, and it's wonderful. Yeah. Our well, relationship. And they then, actually talk as friends. Yeah. And then um, David, our son, ended up uh, marrying a, a gal named Jessica a few years back who had a little girl. And, um, oh, she's actually in our video at the end. Yes, that's yeah, Claire. That's Claire. 
And um, she was two and a half at the time when they married, and she's now seven. And uh, or maybe they were dating, and she, but whatever, she's now seven. But so she's in our life. And then um, a little over two years ago, David and Jessica had a, a son of their own. We all get together for family events. David and his family come to our gatherings, and then you know our fam, oh, big family gatherings on on my side. And then um, we go to birthday parties and stuff for the kids on their side. Mm -hmm. And so we've been very blessed with that. With that. And um, so, you know, Still don't even like though... You, Jessica. <laughs> he has to say that because they pick on each other. Um, but we, uh, so we've been very blessed with that situation, and God has given us many blessings since Chris's passing. And well, more than we deserve. More than we <coughs> deserve, yeah. And people always, often say to us, you know, well, you got to get over it. Well, you, you never get over it. You just find a way around it. And, and it's a whole different. It's just life. a new life, you know. You can't erase someone that you had that type of ties and emotion to out of your life. You just learn to live differently. Um, there's bad days, good days. This week was Chris's birthday. And the, the week before was the week of his passing. Of his passing. So, and then last week we talked about it in our story. And so this week was actually very emotional for me. She... It was. I had a hard week, actually. She wears her... her and, <clears throat> and I know this. And I just... You know, even when, when Chris was fresh in it, it's like there was times that we would talk for hours upon the situation. I mean, hours. Yeah. Uh, we'd take a car ride all the way to Dubuque from <coughs> Janesville and talk the whole time about Chris. And then there's times... Um, we don't ignore it, but we don't talk about it. So I, I always, you know, when when these anniversaries come around, for me, I I deal with the things emotionally differently, and then that she does, and so I just kind of like this week. Um, I made it a point to ask her if she needed to do anything, or wanted to do anything, give her her space, and then. Like last night, she wanted to just go out and shop, and we didn't really shop. I mean, it wasn't like we were spending money, but we just needed to get out, and that was her way of, you know, and we just walked around and held hands, and, and but we really didn't even discuss them, but I, I felt it was, all, it was part of her bereavement process was, you know, at times. Yeah. You know... It, like I say, you gotta. One thing I'd say after do, dealing with this, you gotta learn when to give each other space and when no space should be between you. That you know, that were the ears, the heart, and for, the comforter for one another. But sometimes, in, in and I had a hard time with this. The first part of our relationship was to know when, you know, to, to give her space. Yeah. To deal with her emotions in the way she needed to deal with because i i'm one of them girls let's hash it out let's fix it right here let's be done with it yeah you know and she's like no i want to hold a grudge for an hour or two <laughs> and think dirty thoughts of you like getting <laughs> hit by a train first before i forgive you that was just today yes she was hoping that i got ran over by a tractor today or something <laughs> I, i'm not i'm not sure what she was praying for but i'd seen her like up here with a wand casting some spell <laughs> over a cauldron as I walk by. <laughs> Just kidding, but... Well, and one thing that helps us, when we, you're funny. He He's a funny person, so thank goodness, because even when I'm really mad, he can do something to make me laugh, yeah. usually. <laughs> so, and then I also try to remember how big of a deal is it. My mom always... Uh, years ago, I would call my mom and I'd be like, oh, I would just be complaining about 
everything with him. And, um, and my mom prays, and my mom's had a long marriage now, too. And, you know, she would always say, okay. She never told me, oh, you can't divorce him or anything, but she would say, okay, is it worth getting a divorce over? Because you can do that, but is it worth it? And how about all the other good things he does? And so she always, it always made me think about it and, and uh, calm down and realize, yeah, it's, no, it's not that big of a deal. So I, I always, am, always have been thankful to my mother for doing that, yeah. always, because um, she was really a rock in those times. And her mother thought I was perfect also. Well, she liked you. Okay. Well. And you're not even that nice to her. I try not to. <laughs> yeah. try, I he try, picks on her all the time. I try to keep people at an arm's length. <laughs> you do, kind of, yeah. No. That's just your personality, but... Um, so, and then, so in addition to, you know, we had a blended family and issues there. We've had, you know, a loss, the loss of Chris. We had David come into our life. We have my, sorry, we had had my alcoholism and drug addiction to deal with, which I now have uh, 14 and a half years sober. I'll almost have 15 years in May. Um, and thank God, because that's, we wouldn't be married otherwise. And then she sees me as this perfect specimen with no flaws. <laughs> and she has a hard time holding up to that. <laughs> that's so that it, this brings a lot of depression upon her. <laughs> this isn't even true. Okay, folks. Okay, Moving so on. I don't know. Uh, is there anything else we want to add? No. How many years have we been here? Ninety-nine. So it'll be twenty-three this year. We've been married twenty-two. Boy, I thought I was going to be in trouble for nothing. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll be 23 years this year. And a um, stupid movie I watched with Steve Martin. And uh, he had a senile grandmother. And they were going to, like, an amusement park. And, and the grandmother said something about a roller coaster. And I, I always just remember this, is that uh, Steve didn't catch it, but his wife did. And what the, the old lady was saying, that life is like a roller coaster. It has its ups and its downs. Some of it's thrilling, some of it's depressing, and some of it's darn right scary. But if you're willing to stick with your spouse, and you're both willing to work on the relationship, and you're both willing to ride the highs and the lows, the overall roller coaster ride should be a good ride. You should want to ride it over and over and over again. I know I like writing my wife over and over again. Well, and it gets... <laughs> I'm it, sorry. <laughs> it gets... Um, so many people want to throw in the towel. Yeah, the, the first... All the time. Yeah, the first, you know, it's like, oh, this happened. I'm done. And Which, you'll get to that point with anybody at some point. I mean, anybody you're with. So, I mean, as long as there's not abuse and that going on, you know, I, it's definitely worth it to keep working through these things it's it's an ongoing process after 23 years i can honestly say i couldn't imagine life not being married to her even though there's days she frustrates me and, and I, way more days that you frustrate me she's easily frustrated <laughs> but which is true which is true uh but i mean would you not say the same is it, it, no, I, oh, I agree with you, yeah. I, we're best friends. We're best friends, and, you know, <laughs> that, we don't have secrets. Nope. No. The last time I lied to her, I got a pot of spaghetti uh, macaroni thrown at me, so. That was years ago, but. <laughs> yeah, 20 years, probably. Ago. Yeah. So I don't lie anymore. <laughs> she can Thank tell goodness. that story in another one, but. <coughs> but anyway, uh, thank you again for watching. Next week we should be getting back to our uh, normal footage. 
Well, I think next week we're going to share, give you guys a, a tour of our camper and then go on to uh, doing more of our travel stuff. Don't we have some footage though? We may. I'll have to look. But anyway, Did next week. Exciting? No, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yes. Wait. Then we're also going to have, uh, we flew on a private jet yeah. to Miami. Private jet to Miami. Came back. And then went and sat on the 50-yard line, second row, playoffs at Tampa and Philly. So that was cool. That was yeah. cool. And so I mean, we've been doing some cool stuff. Yeah, things that, you know, by the way, we're not rich uh, at all. I just happen to have some good benefits at my job. Um, so, uh, but it was something that, you know, not very many people... Working for Karina. Yes. Not very many people get to do, and uh, we thought we'd share that with you. We were excited about it. It was fun to do, you know. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my dad uh, flew a corporate jet for 30 years. I never got to ride in the corporate jet. And and he, for the first time in 30 years, got to be pampered in a corporate jet. So yeah, that was so a that switch was cool. for him. And he spent most of the time talking to the pilots because they were actually flying uh, the same model jet that he retired in. So it was kind of neat, and the pilots really got a kick out of that they had a 30-year a experience pilot with, I think he had 15,000 hours in that specific airplane that they were flying. Or, I, I'm not sure. but So next week, camper tour and... Probably some... Probably some of that footage. The jet and football yeah so we'll see you guys next week thank you very much for watching leave comments subscribe hopefully this was helpful to someone that may be struggling yes and always know you know don't give up keep trying in your marriage no matter no matter what happens you can get through it and just concentrate on the, the positive the positive of, absolutely which it's easy Vinny, to keep she has it's easy to get latched on to all the negative things about each other, but always remember the positives. Write them down if you have to. <laughs> well, I'm serious. Do you have enough paper for my <laughs> I, I have a whole pad. Like, I think one. Okay. <laughs> anyway, right. thanks for watching. Thank you. See you next week. Please so. Give us a huge thumbs up.